Hi there YouTubers and 3D Studio Max lovers. In today's episode we're going to talk about Corona Pattern and how to create amazing details with Corona Pattern. As you can see here, I already created a pattern for uh, this chair. This is the chair from the last episode that we modeled. And in the last episode I created here a texture for the uh, rattan using a texture from the website, from the uh, company. But in today's episode, uh, I'm going to show you how to create extra details for uh, creating this uh, rattan pattern and how to make uh, also the material for this uh, rattan pattern. And if you are ready, let's just dive in. So as you can see, this is the 3D model that we modeled on the last episode. Uh, this is the texture that we used back then. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just a very low resolution textures that for creating really beautiful renders, you can't really use it. From far away, it's looking decent, but from close up, it's not looking very nice as you can see also here. So what we need to do first is need to create a square uh, where we have the tiles. So as you can see, this is re repetitive. So yeah, what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to create a, a rectangle in a, in a square where I think it's uh, the texture is getting repetitive. And then I'm just going to make this 15 by 15 uh, millimeters. And now using the line, I'm just going to create uh, the first uh, detail of the pattern. I'm going to apply a sweep to this uh, line. I'm just going to use this as, as an ellipse. And now I'm going to try to make some uh, realistic dimensions. So I'm going to try to match the image behind. I'm just going to use Alt X to make this transparent first. And then uh, yeah, I'm going to use 2.2 for the leg, maybe even less, less step because we don't need it for now. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to apply a turbo smooth. In this way, I can uh, create more details in the future. So I'm going to delete the caps at the end of the spline. In this way, my turbo smooth will stay, uh, will keep the, the shape. Okay, my shape looks good right now. And now I'm just gonna start uh, creating the first detail. Uh, if you look on the, the left side, uh, you can see here how the shape is moving from the top bar going underneath uh, to the other straw. So I'm tr gonna try to do exactly the same thing. So for first with the refine, I'm gonna create a point here. And then I need to create another one around this area that is gonna go on the lower part so underneath. What I'm going to do now, I'm just gonna move point. Uh, so I'm First, I'm gonna make my length 0.6, so I know the width of my straw. I'm gonna use the generate to generate mapping coordinates for the future when I'm gonna apply a texture to it. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna select my point, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna move on the Z axis this point with uh, well, I'm gonna select all of them and I'm gonna move them 0.3 because this is half of my. Uh, the width of my straw and then this one is going to go another 0.3 so in total is 0.6 so this means that there is space now underneath for a straw to go uh, with a width of 0.6 now i'm creating the next one i'm gonna just uh, concentrate to this corner first i'm gonna do exactly the same thing i'm just gonna copy the sweep that i already made for the first object on into this line and then, yes, I'm going to do exactly what I did also on the other side. I need to go a little bit outside of the square that I made initially. Okay, this looks fine. I'm gonna create the next one now. I'm gonna paste my sweep because it's the same everywhere. Of course, in reality, they are not all the same, but here it doesn't make any sense to have different uh, width for each, of, for each of them. And now using the refine, I'm just gonna create a couple of, uh, of vertices to manipulate my, uh, my line. I'm gonna make this point higher, not that high, 0.6. I'm 
gonna make this point uh, three millimeters and then this needs to go under so this needs to go minus 0.6 that needs to go minus 0.3 and the beginning and the end they are on the same height this is very important to know because the moment that you are copying this object to the left and to the right as a pattern they need to be on the same height okay this is starting to look uh, good and what i'm going to do next is uh, i'm going to merge all these objects into one object so i'm gonna delete the modifier the sweep modifiers on all of them and i'm gonna attach all of them in one object with the sweep modifier now i have one all of them in one object what i need to do next is to because the left bottom corner is the same as the right top corner so uh, now i'm just making a copy of it but uh but i just realized that it's better to have this as an instance so in this way when i'm creating another line on the left shape it's gonna be created also on the right one because this is an object that is symmetrical on the diagonal so i'm just gonna make a copy with instance for the object in this way in the moment that i'm gonna manipulate one of them it's gonna manipulate also the other one so right now i'm gonna try to create the details on this object and just use a 0.6 to have that part of the object higher and for this one here i'm gonna use also the same here you can see how the shape is going from above underneath and then it's continuously so i'm trying to recreate exactly the same shape also here so this part is to go underneath it should be a little bit out of the square this looks fine and same also here i already have the shape so it looks quite good already so what i'm going to do next i'm gonna the second shape that is uh, an instance of the first one i'm gonna merge it with the first shape so i need to take the second shape i'm gonna make it an individual object the second one i'm just gonna delete the clip and i'm gonna attach everything on the first shape i'm gonna go to editable spline and attach i'm gonna apply another editable spline in case i want to go back and i'm gonna attach my second shape so i'm just gonna make a copy by selecting the original rectangle and my shape and i'm gonna move everything exactly on the corner of rectangle in this way i know that my shape is in the same position kind of the same the other direction to see how it's uh, to see the repetition and yeah that part is not looking amazing you can see the connections between the objects are not uh, working very well right now so now because all of them are instances if i modify one of them also the other one are going to be modified so in this way i can make them continuously between the objects So now I'm just trying to fix this uh, on all the directions. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to attach my second shape to the first one. In this way I can uh, weld the vertices that are not aligned. So I'm just going to select them. I'm going to put like 10 millimeters between them, push weld. And in the moment that I'm doing that, it's going to be one object. I'm gonna do the same also for these ones also here and also here in this way I'm gonna be sure that they are correct and they are in the same level and the same height so I'm gonna attach also the top object to this one I'm gonna delete the sweep of course and I'm gonna attach it and after that I'm just gonna weld the vertices that are they need to be continuously in the shape select them weld I'm gonna weld also this one I'm gonna fix a little bit this part so the intersection is not going to be so visible now I'm gonna apply the slice on the X just gonna move it exactly where my original square was 
and I'm gonna remove the negative. I'm gonna copy it, paste over, open it, slice plane, just move it on the other side, remove positive in this case, I'm gonna do the same on all the sides. I'll just go also on the other side. And now I have my uh, pattern, my tileable pattern. So now I'm just gonna tile this uh, pattern on the object. So I'm gonna apply a turbo smooth to see how it's looking in case I want to add more details to it. But yeah, it's not looking very nice. So what I'm going to do next is to create a material for it, but uh, because this is, uh, even though it's a straw, his material looks more or less like a wood. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to make a copy of the wood material that uh, I used for creating the material for the chair. And I'm just gonna make this texture much smaller and I'm gonna change the color of it to have it lighter and a little bit more yellow because this is going a little bit in the red area. So yeah, I'm using a color correction to correct the color of the wood. 1.5, I think it's gonna work. I'm gonna use a little bit of hue to make it more yellow, more warm, maybe a little bit more darker. And uh, yeah, I need to change the, as you can see you don't see much because the texture is very big I'm trying to get closer to the original uh, texture that you see on the image that we got from the Tonet website and what I'm going to do next it's uh, I'm just gonna go to my original object I'm gonna apply an editable poly delete this uh, edge from the extrude modifier and also the bottom then I'm gonna try to select the edge and make an extrude to it and try to select only my uh, the edge of the object and try to apply a chamfer to this. Okay, so as you can see, this is my object. Now this is the small bit, this part of the wood. Actually, my rattan should be over it because this is how they are creating the, keeping the rattan in one spot. You use two, banded uh, wood sticks to that are converging together and it's keeping the rattan so my rattan should be a little bit bigger than this because the rattan is going between this part of the wood and the second one i hope uh, you guys understood what i'm trying to explain here i'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller now this looks fine only problem is that the chamfer is a little bit too big, but I'm just gonna make it smaller. Perfect. What I'm going to do now, I'm gonna apply the Corona pattern mode. And as you can see, this is the, doesn't have too many options. I'm gonna unhide everything. And at none, I'm gonna apply my, my 3D model, my tileable 3D model. It is already 15 by 15, the crop. And uh, unfortunately you can't see it directly in the viewport. You need to render it so in this way you, it's gonna show up. I'm gonna move my original pattern a little bit lower so it's not gonna intersect with the... Uh... Okay, now I can see something in there. The only problem is that it's very, very small. Let's see from where the problem is coming. So the crop is 15 by 15 millimeters, exactly as the original one. And uh, yeah, it's coming from here. I'm gonna add the uh, 15 here, 15 on the other side, and now it should be on the right scale. You can already see it is uh, using the texture that was originally on the, the rattan texture that was originally on the plane. But I'm going to change this by applying my new material. And now you can see it. There is a small problem here, as you can see. It's looking good, but it's not perfect. And I'm just going to my original pattern that I had in the beginning. I'm gonna close all the slices that I uh, used and I'm just gonna make a copy on the left side and on the bottom side. And I'm gonna try to fix those uh, seams. 
now I'm making the copy. I need to select also the original square. I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna change this to delete the slice, also the sweep, everything. And I'm gonna try to attach the object, the objects to the original one. And now try to weld the vertices that are not in the same plane. The cool part about this method by using uh, splines is the fact that you can always go back. You always keep your original object in there so you can always make changes to it. In the case that you are using an editable poly or anything else it was much harder to go back. So as you can see because uh, I did that now I can just go back at any time and fix the object in case it's not working from the first time. So I'm just adding my other object now. I'm gonna weld the vertices also. And this way the shape is gonna be perfect and I already have my slice over as you can see in the moment that uh, I'm gonna apply it it's gonna be exactly in the right place so it's just gonna slice what I don't need from this object because I need only one the middle one and it's done and now everything should be perfect now if I'm rendering all over again it's looking perfect can see you can't see any seams anymore the and the good part in case you don't like the size of the rattan straw you can just go back to the original object and you can change the width the height anything to, to this and also if you want to have more details you can always at, at any time you can apply a turbo smooth to it and it's gonna have more details so I'm just gonna change now the dimensions of my texture for the rattan because it's uh, way too big. I'm gonna make it just quite very very small. And this way you're going to see some details on it. The bump is a little bit too big but this can be fixed very easy add more reflectivity to the material so yeah if i want to make it bigger i can just make it from here by changing the width 2.5 3 millimeters 5 millimeters whatever i want so you can play at any time with the with the shape and the size of the pattern. It's looking too small, too big. This is something that you can't do with the texture. Once you have it, that's the size of the texture. But with this, you can always go back. Okay, so this is the final object. As you can see, it's looking very nice. Even though it's not really a high poly object, it's a low poly object, but it's looking really good. So if you find this useful, please don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, follow me on my Patreon, you can download the, the 3D model from there. And see you in the next one. Bye!